In this video, we're going to discuss scattering from a delta function potential. If you recall, uh, we already covered the bound states of a negative delta function. Now we're going to talk about the scattering, where the energy is greater than zero, and so you get scattering instead of a bound state. First, we'll start by talking about uh, the differences between positive and negative delta functions. Uh, then we'll set up the scattering problem and apply the boundary conditions and finally calculate reflection and transmission probabilities. So, if you recall, we had a negative delta function potential with a single bound state with a wave function that looked like this. It was psi of x is equal to square root of m alpha over h bar e to the minus m alpha absolute value of x over h bar squared, where the potential uh, of that delta function is minus alpha delta of x. So it's a uh, direct delta function. The energy of that bound state is minus m alpha squared over 2 h bar squared. And remember, there's always one, only one bound state for this potential, independent of the strength of the potential alpha. Now, what if the delta function is positive? Well, the delta function positive means plus alpha delta of x. There's clearly no bound states then because the potential is positive. And E is always greater than or equal to zero over all space. So any uh, particle that exists there has to have its energy greater than zero. But if you have an energy greater than zero, both these potentials with the same energy greater than zero behave exactly the same as scatterers. So let's now proceed with the scattering, deciding what the scattering from a negative delta function would be. If E is greater than zero, in region one of this system, we have a free particle. And therefore, uh, you have psi of x is equal to a times e to the i k x, which is a traveling wave. Remember, we're ignoring the um, uh, the time component, but it's there. It's e to the minus i omega t, so this becomes k x minus omega t, and that means that it's a traveling wave moving in the forward direction, positive x direction. And then you have b e to the minus i k x, which is a traveling wave with the same frequency moving in the opposite direction, and both these solve the free particle solution, where k is equal to square root of 2me over h bar. Since a e is positive, this is all positive. In region 2, on the right side, where x is greater than 0, the wave function is also that of a free particle, but only with a positive going wave function. So if we assume that we have a, a wave traveling from the left, from negative infinity towards this barrier, then we can't have any waves traveling from positive infinity in towards the barrier. And so we only have a positive going wave function. We ignore the wave function that would go uh, to the left on uh, x is greater than zero range. So we can write that as psi of x is equal to f e to the i k x. So that again is traveling in the positive direction. The wave function has to be continuous across the origin. And so at the origin, at x equals 0, we know that e to the i k 0 plus b e to the minus i k 0 is equal to f e to the i k 0, which means that we have a plus b is equal to f. The condition on the derivative of the wave function is that its discontinuity, if you recall, is related to the magnitude of the wave function at the origin. And so that says that the, the psi in the d psi dx in the region one is i k a e to the i k x minus i k b e to the minus i k x. And in region two, it's i k f e to the i k x. And so these two, the discontinuity between these two has to be related to the strength of the uh, delta function barrier. So delta of d psi dx at x equals zero is equal to i k 
F minus A plus B, because each of these has an IK term, and it's D psi 2 of X minus D psi 1 of DX. And so that gives us F minus AB, A plus B. And that has to be equal to minus 2 times M alpha over H bar squared times the wave function at the origin. The wave function at the origin can simply be, we can take it from this side, which is simply uh, a plus b. And so, uh, at x equals zero. And so we can write that i k f minus a plus b is equal to two m alpha over h bar squared a plus b. Well, that means that we can simplify this by solving for f. So we'll bring these terms over to the right side uh, after we've divided by ik. Then we divide by ik and then we, we uh, uh, add a minus ib to both sides and we get f is equal to minus i 1 over ik times 2m alpha over h bar squared times a plus b plus a minus b. And so if we gather terms a and b, we can gather the terms for a as uh, a times 1 plus i times 2m alpha over h bar squared k minus b times 1 minus i m alpha 2m alpha over h bar k. And that, if we now make a substitution and we say that beta is equal to m alpha over h bar squared k, which is this term, we can write this as f is equal to a times 1 plus 2i beta minus b times 1 minus 2i beta. And from the uh, continuity equation from of the wave function, uh, remember it was f is equal to a plus b, so b is equal to f minus a. And we can now substitute b is equal to f minus a into this expression, and so we have an expression that only depends on f and a. Now, why are we interested in uh, an expression that only depends on f and a? Remember, a is the coefficient of the incoming wave from the negative side towards the barrier, and f is the transmitted wave through the barrier going in the same direction, the positive x direction. So if we're looking for the transmission coefficient, which is what we're after, how much of the wave is transmitted, it's going to be related to f and a. So when we make this substitution, we get that f is equal to uh, a times 1 plus 2i beta minus f times 1 minus 2i beta plus a times 1 minus 2i beta. And we can do a little bit of simplification, bringing the, all the f's over to one side and the a's to the other side, noting that this term cancels this term. So we have 2a, and then the rest is f. We can solve for 2a. So 2a is equal to 2f times 1 minus i beta. When we bring this over, we have uh, plus 2 uh, plus minus 2 i beta, and we pull the 2 out, and then we can cancel it with the 2 on the other side. And so that means that f over a, this is the transmitted wave divided by the incident wave amplitudes, are equal to 1 over 1 minus i beta. And that's called the reflection coefficient. And if we then substitute back in to find b and then divide by a, we get that b over a, which is the reflected uh, wave, is minus i beta over 1 minus i beta. So we can obtain the same, the same answer if we use that psi of, of 0 is f. Remember we said it was a plus b, but we get the same answer if we, if we use f. So the derivative of psi i is i k a e to the i k a x minus i k b e to the minus i k x. The same thing for d psi 2 dx, i k f e to the i k x. And now the difference, again, we're following the same derivation, but we're going to make one change later, is i k f minus a plus b. 
and that's equal to psi zero times these constants. And we replace that with f. So it's minus 2m alpha over h bar squared times f. If beta, again, is equal to m alpha over h bar squared k, we can then rewrite this as 2 beta k f. And now we get f. When we rearrange this, we get f times 1 minus 2i beta is equal to a minus b. Since b is equal to f minus a, this becomes a minus f minus a. And again, we get the same solution. We get that f over a is 1 over uh, 1 minus i beta, and b is minus i beta over 1 minus i beta. So what is this saying? If we look at it really very carefully, these are the coefficients that go in front of the traveling waves that go in each direction. This is the positive going transmitted wave. This is the positive coming incoming wave. This is the negatively moving reflected wave. Notice there's a minus sign here. That means that if we calculate the, uh, if we look at the wave function for B, it has a uh, 180 degree phase shift from A. That means that as you do the reflection, you get a 180 degree phase shift because the amplitude changes from positive to negative including then this I beta. So these are called transmission and reflection coefficients. If we want to get the reflection and transmission probabilities, we need to square the reflection and transmission coefficients. And so the transmitted to transmission probability, the probability of transmission is F over A modulus squared. And now it's important because now these are complex quantities. This is 1 over 1 minus i beta. And so when we square it, we drop all the i's and we get 1 over 1 plus beta squared. And the reflection coefficient probability is beta squared over 1 plus beta squared. And if you add reflection and transmission, they should come out to 1. And in fact, they do because you get on top 1 plus beta squared divided by the common denominator, which is 1 minus beta squared. But if you remember, beta is equal to m alpha over h bar squared k, and k squared is equal to 2me over h bar. So we can now go back and substitute this in, and we get that the transmission probability is 1 over 1 plus m alpha squared over 2 h bar squared e, and the reflection probability is 1 over 1 plus 2h bar squared e over m alpha squared. Now notice that these are probabilities, so these are dimensionless, and that means that this quantity is also dimensionless, and so this quantity is also dimensionless. It's one or the other quantity. So for a delta function barrier, instead of a well, right, so we had the delta function well is what we solved now, but if we instead make a delta function barrier where alpha goes, minus alpha goes to alpha, so now it flips up and it's positive, the reflection and transmission probabilities are unchanged because they depend on alpha squared. So if we had minus alpha instead of alpha, it doesn't make any difference. So as I said at the beginning, the reflection and transmission probabilities are independent of the direction of the, uh, uh, of the delta function barrier. It can be negative, that is a well, or it can be positive, that is a barrier. What does this look like? Well, as energy changes, of course, these will get will change. So when the energy is low, when energy when uh, yeah when when energy is low, then the transmission probability is zero because the barrier is just too large and everything is reflected. As you increase the energy of the system, the transmission probability approaches 1 asymptotically, and the reflection probability approaches 0 asymptotically. And you can see that from the expressions here. As E goes to very large numbers, this term becomes small compared to 1, and T eventually goes to 1. When E goes to very large numbers, this term dominates over 1, and 1 over something very large goes to 0. 